So 2014 has been the year of the smart watches and we have had lots of smart watches. So we are uh, we're finishing the year with the Moto 360. Uh, this has just come to the Indian, uh, Indian market and is available online. It costs about 15,000 rupees, but it, is it really worth it? I'm not sure. This works mostly on voice and you need to talk to your watch. I think that's not as comfortable as using touch on your watch. There is touch, but it does not do a lot with touch. So it gives you, um, it gives you a simple watch face which you can keep changing. Then uh, you have access to uh, Google Now, which gives you access to everything. You can ask Google Now to get you anything you want. It will give you your, um, uh, actually the number of steps you've taken, your heart rate, your agenda for the day, your calendar, your stopwatch, everything is here. It does not have apps as such on the watch. Uh, yep. You have certain apps that work on the watch that you download to your phone and they start reflecting on the watch. But it's not like you have 10 inbuilt apps on the on the watch itself. I'm not saying that the Moto 360 is not functional. It is very functional, but it takes a lot of getting used to. I still don't know what gives me what. So a left swipe gives you what, a right swipe gives you what. You will take time to learn that. And I, I have been a smartwatch user for a year. It is a bit confusing for me. So the biggest issue I have with the Moto 360 is the battery life. It gives you a maximum of a day, which means you have to charge this watch every day. It's not that easy charging the Moto 360 because you have to carry this charger with you everywhere. This works with a USB, uh, uh, USB cable, but it's not that easy carrying this charger everywhere. So today we are going to show you three budget smartphones and they are from completely different companies, they are completely different operating systems. So three phones, I'll start with the Lumia 535. You must have noticed that I did not use Nokia before Lumia because this is the first Lumia which does not carry a Nokia branding, it carries a Microsoft branding and that's why this phone is different. Except for the change in branding, uh, I can't see anything that is really great about this phone, anything that's really different from the 530 for instance. Uh, I like the fact that the phone now uh, has a decent camera like before, but it's not a great camera. Uh, it's, a, it's a decent camera. You have a 5MP camera on the front as well as on the back, which means you get good selfie shots. Overall, I find the 535 a bit sluggish. Uh, it could be an issue with the certain device that the uh, it could be an issue with the device that I am using right now, but it seems a bit sluggish, especially when you're opening some, uh, opening some apps like the camera. It takes a few seconds to open, which can be irritating at times. But then you have to remember that this is a phone that costs around 9,000 rupees. It is a budget phone. You can't expect the earth out of it. Lumia 520, the Lumia 530 were the best smartphones in the under rupees 10,000 range when they came in, into the Indian market. I can't say the same thing about the 535. The 535 has a lot of competition from Android phones, from other stuff. But you can still go for the 535 if you want the Windows phone operating system. If you see a phone this thick, there has to be something wrong with the phone or something right with the phone. It could be a big design flaw or it could be a huge battery. So this is the Lava Iris Fuel 60 and this has a huge battery. A battery so big that you can work on it for three days without recharging. I, yeah, you heard me right, three days without recharging. And that's because this has got a 4,000 mAh battery. The Lava Iris 360 is a very decent, very ordinary Android phone. Uh, it gives you everything that you would expect in an Android KitKat phone. It's got a decent camera. Everything is decent, nothing is great. But the battery is the big plus point with this phone. Look at this operating system, look at this screen and you know there is something different. This is not Android, this is not Windows, this is not iOS. This is the Hive. So what is the Hive? The Hive is a customized operating system, maybe more like a mod which is coming to you from the house of Zolo. So Zolo as you know is a brand of premium smartphones from Lava and Zolo is now working on this Hive operating system or platform which gets in a lot of uh, data from people who are using it and incorporates those feedbacks uh, into the phone. Themes on a, um, on a Hive phone mean that everything from your uh, screens to your icons to your fonts, everything changes and you can keep on customizing it as you want. There are hundreds of themes to choose from. 
So this 5 inch phone also has a very uh, different design in the sense that you see the metal bezel or the metal frame actually covers the volume button as well as the power button and they are just humps on the frame. I, I think it's a good design idea and they seem to have a very decent design. The phone is also very affordable for a 5 inch phone and there is also a 5.5 inch version. Go for the Zolo Hive Omega phone if you want to you know, stay away from the crowd and be different, be noted as somebody who's carrying a different phone. The phone is decent, I've used it for some time and it's not a very affordable phone. So you can, if you want, try and experiment with a different operating system this time. To read the full reviews of all the devices that you've seen today, go to indianexpress.com slash technology.